We're all familiar with the typical mobs of Minecraft. A sheep, or a creeper for example. But there are some mobs that we don't see. Mobs that may be present in the game, but are never seen. Mobs that were originally part of the plan but never saw the light of day. Mobs that some know exist, but for the most part have fallen into obscurity. Let's talk about the forgotten mobs of Minecraft. Mojang has been adding mobs to Minecraft for over 12 years now, but this one was the very first. Yup, the original Minecraft mob. It wasn't a creeper, nor was it a pig, or anything like that. No. It was a human. Now this might surprise some of you, but bear with me. Humans were added all the way back on May 13th of 2009. This was during the very first developmental phase of Minecraft. I'm sure a lot of you guys were expecting the first mob to be something different, but when you think about it, it makes sense. This was a very old, raw version of the game, one of the very first versions ever, actually. It makes sense that Notch would be playing around with ideas for creatures to add, and a human is something that would probably come to mind for a game that has a lot of similarities with the real world. They wear a Steve skin and run around in lazy circles, flailing their limbs as they do. Later on, humans were updated to attack players by simply running into them, just like a zombie, dealing half a heart of damage. They were mostly disabled soon after they were originally added and were eventually fully removed. They do not save in the world and are erased when you exit the game. Speaking subjectively, here's a side note. Humans are slightly uncanny. It's kind of strange to see what looks like many mirrored versions of yourself that just aren't you. Regardless, it is worth going back, way back, and launching an old instance of Minecraft just to have a look at its original mob. So there are a few different types of villages in Minecraft. Desert, plains, etc. And each type of village has a custom villager skin for its inhabitants. However, some biomes don't have specific villages. A couple examples of this are the swamp and the jungle biomes. The interesting bit here is that while there are no dedicated jungle or swamp villages, there are jungle and swamp villagers. But how, you ask, will these unique villagers spawn if a village for them does not exist? Well, there are three ways. One, a pre-existing village in a different biome, say there's a plains biome right by a jungle, a village can generate in a plains biome and intersect the jungle biome if it's a large enough village. And this will result in jungle villagers in the jungle part of the village. You can also cure a zombie villager that spawned in one of the biomes, as well as breeding villagers in one of the biomes. You can also simply use a villager spawn egg in either biome. But enough talk, let me just show you what each one looks like. So there you have it, the two types of villagers that do not have a village. I don't know about you, but I would really love to see both a swamp and a jungle village in the future, but for now, we'll just have to hope. If you are not familiar with it, the Illusioner is an Illager mob, think Pillager or Vindicator, that was never fully integrated into the game. As you may have guessed by their name, they fight with tricks and try to confuse you. These things are very smart and quite complex, so let me give you a rundown. Starting things off, the Illusioner has the ability to see through walls. It's also somewhat tankier than the player, as it has 32 HP, which translates to 16 hearts. The Illusioner uses a combination of spells and a bow. The first spell is the Blindness spell, and it's exactly what it sounds like. The Illusioner will cast the Blindness effect onto you for 20 seconds. Thankfully, it will generally only do this once per encounter. The second spell is a duplicate spell. The illusion will make itself invisible and create duplicates of itself. 
They look just like the original, but cannot be damaged and can float through blocks like a Vex. Only the real Illusioner can actually damage you, but the other ones share the bow animation, and as you can imagine, it gets really confusing. Once you finally damage the real Illusioner, all the duplicates will teleport back to the original, then go back out to different positions. When its invisibility runs out, all the duplicates will disappear. The Illusioner will take a second to raise its arms and refresh the spell, if it is still engaged in combat. Now, these spells don't actually damage you, mind you. They are more meant to disorient and distract you while the Illusioner attacks with its bow. The bow is how it actually damages you. Throughout all of this, it tries to keep the player a consistent distance away, it will advance if you move away from it, and back up if you move towards it. The Illusioner was originally added in a snapshot back in April of 2012, but never fully integrated into the game. And that is where it sits, today. This mob doesn't have a lot to it, but it's worth mentioning. This Bedrock exclusive mob is similar to the actual Elder Guardian, but it isn't the same. It can only be spawned by using the Summon command. The Elder Guardian ghost looks the same as the Elder Guardian, but it is missing the end of its tail, it has less health, and it makes a different sound when it is damaged. Interestingly, if you spawn it outside of water, it just floats upward until it despawns, whereas if you spawn it in the water, it just sinks downward until it goes into the void and dies. The ghost can clip through all blocks, making its name quite appropriate. It is unknown why this mob exists or why it remains in the game. It was added in July of 2019 and has been sitting unused ever since. This mob is exclusive to Bedrock Edition, namely Education Edition. It is invincible and cannot move or be pushed. You cannot normally spawn this mob, you must first make sure that the education setting is turned on when creating a bedrock world, then you must slash summon it. These mobs are solely for utility, it is a very useful interface that you can customize. This interface allows you to change things like its skin, its dialogue, or its name. You can even create interactive buttons in the interface that, when pressed, execute a command. All of this can only be edited by someone in creative mode, though. If you're in survival, you can view the dialogue and the buttons that may have been created, but everything is as it previously was. You cannot edit any of it. As you can see, these things are very useful for maps and the like. They can just be stationed throughout the world and the player can talk to them for instructions or to activate something like running a command. This is a 100% utilitarian mob and that's okay. Before we're done, though, I wanted to do a few honorable mentions. These are mobs that, for one reason or another, didn't really make a good full-length segment in the video, so I decided to make a little section here at the end because I thought they were at least worth mentioning. So, enjoy! The giant is a huge zombie that doesn't spawn naturally or burn in daylight. It doesn't attack or move or anything either, actually, as it completely lacks an AI. It basically just sits there until it despawns. There's really not a lot to this mob, but it looks super cool. This is the agent. It doesn't really do anything on its own, but if you get it connected to something called a WebSocket server, it can do some pretty neat stuff. If you have it set up correctly, you can basically program the agent to execute tasks like mining or cutting down trees or building something so it's super duper handy but it's um a little bit complicated this is only accessible with cheats though so don't count on it helping you out in your survival world both of these very similar mobs were added then subsequently removed back in 2010 Despite their names, both Steve and Black Steve look very different from the player. Neither of them have any animations, and they just kind of glide around the world aimlessly, forever. There is not a lot of information available on either of these guys, but they were in the game 12 years ago, so there you are. Beast Boy was added around the same time as Steve and Black Steve, and used for testing. It is done in the same style as Steve and Black Steve. And yes, this was modeled after the Beast Boy from DC Comics and Teen Titans. 
Rana is very similar to the last few mobs mentioned in most ways. It does have a very different model, though. There are also a lot of mobs added by the couple joke updates, uh, which are the love update 15w14a and addition 2.0, but that is a whole can of worms for another day. There are some pretty funny things in there though, like flying squid and pink withers and smiling creepers. Maybe next time. So there you have it. Many of these mobs will almost assuredly be buried in Minecraft history forever. However, some might not be. Some of these mobs could still be integrated into the game sometime in the future. When or if that will happen is unknown. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was my first time ever really making anything like this, and I think it turned out alright. That being said, have a great rest of your day everyone, and goodbye.